Australian Foreign and Defense Minister Ayn South Korea to sit down for talks with their counterparts in the nation. Ahead of Friday's meeting, they visited the truce village of Panmunjom. There, the deal reaffirmed their commitment to applying maximum pressure to bring about positive change in Pyongyang. Connie Kim has the full story. Looking across North Korea at the joint security area inside the truce village of Panmunjom, visiting Australia's foreign and defense ministers emphasized a maximum diplomatic and economic pressure to rein in the regime's nuclear ambitions. We reiterated our support for the collective strategy of maximum diplomatic and economic pressure on North Korea so that it will be compelled to return to the negotiating table. Foreign Minister Julie Bishop said North Korea's ballistic missile launches are illegal and that the Australian government will continue to support South Korea in deterring the North's provocations. While Australia underscores maximum diplomatic and economic pressure when dealing with North Korea issues, Defense Minister Maurice Payne also stressed Canberra will continue to work with Seoul and Washington, highlighting the key is supporting regional security. The United States have made clear that uh, military options remain on the table in the event of, uh, of the, uh, the worst outcome. And uh, Australia has made it very clear that uh, we are working closely with the United States, working closely with South Korea, uh, without wishing to engage in, uh, in hypotheticals. In the face of growing nuclear threats, Australia's Defence Minister Payne also said the country welcomes the idea of more South Korean forces participating in Australia-led multinational defence drills. The visiting minister's itinerary will continue until Friday when they're expected to meet with the South Korean foreign and defence ministers to further discuss a range of issues concerning bilateral cooperation and regional security. Connie Kim, Item News.